Hey, it's Nicole at The Pearl Review. I'm doing a series on classics and personal favorites and just going over why I think these books are special for people who are considering reading them. So I am excited to talk today about Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. Uh, this book was published in 1925. Uh, it's set in 1923 in London on a single day. Uh, Clarissa Dalloway is an aging socialite. She's 53 years old um, and she's preparing for a party that she's hosting that evening for her conservative politician husband. And while she's going throughout her day, um, her ex-boyfriend actually visits her house uh, unannounced and they have a conversation and it causes her to think about her life and her choices, her mistakes, her future. Um, and so we follow her and a cast of other characters who are in various degrees related to Mrs. Dalloway or will um, connect in some way with her life during that day. I just finished this book and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's, a, it's an experimental novel. Virginia Woolf was uh, considered one of the greatest novelists of the 20th century. Um, she's part of both the modernist movement and the lost generation if you're not familiar with her. And Mrs. Dalloway is considered her best love work, although some serious fans consider The Waves to be her masterpiece, um, although some people say Mrs. Dalloway is. Uh, so this book is like other modernist novels where it's experimental, um, it's a break from tradition. There was a lot of things happening uh, during that time uh, in the aftermath of World War I um, and also in several advances in different fields, psychology, um, art. Um, I think that she was definitely inspired by cubism uh, and psychology. Uh, for this novel, and I'll just get into why I think that. The um, different experimental approach she has in this novel is using this literary form of uh, free, indirect discourse. Uh, so it's really similar to um, Stream of Consciousness, except it's basically that the novel dips in and out of uh, third person narrative into first. Um, and it switches from character to character. So it's this fluid novel that you're getting the um, you know, inner thoughts of all these different characters. And the way that she structures it, sometimes there's no um, you know, quotes uh, when something is being said. Um, and sometimes it's not really uh, clear who is thinking or who is talking. Um, but the way that her beautiful prose flows um, and the way she dips in and out of these characters is really enjoyable, at least I thought so. Um, this book is really, really interesting. It's one of the most unique books I have ever read. Um, the uh, effect of this like interesting and unique and artsy um, approach to the novel actually, I think, makes us get a better understanding of its characters. Um, you know, uh, while it's an untraditional, unconventional novel, it also is deeply intimate. And I think that's really interesting that it's both um, because you're able to get inside um, both Clarissa Dalloway's head and, you know, the people around her you get this, um, you know, all these different angles on uh, the same character or, you know, the same set of friends. Um, and that's why it does remind me of cubism. Um, and the thing is, is that Clarissa Dalloway is this interesting choice. I'm sorry, my cat has jumped behind my books and is now scratching. She's really, really tiny. And so she can do stupid things like this. So Mrs. Dalloway as a main character is an interesting choice in and of itself. Um, she is, you know, this woman who is on the gradual decline into, you know, old age and invisibility. Um, she is um, a character that could easily be overlooked, but she's incredibly nuanced. You know, she is um, relatably self-absorbed 
and thinks about these frivolous things, but also she's extremely reflective. Uh, I love that this book has so many thoughts where um, there's contradictions. You know, um, I'll read a, a, a sentence and and it completely goes against something that the character thought. Um, you know, a couple of you know pages before that, and it's it's very realistic. You know, um, I forget who said it, but. Um, someone I think challenged a, a famous um, you know figure and said you know you contradict yourself I don't know if it was Walt Whitman I have no idea but the the person's response was I am vast I contain multitudes and so does Mrs. Dalloway and her friends um, I love that also this book is um, feminist and you know we often have you know frivolous characters being women but actually there's men that are more frivolous than Mrs. Dalloway um, there's you know impotent and not like sexually impotent but you know um, impotent kind of useless men characters uh, uh, in this in this book and it's it kind of evens the playing field which I, I kind of found uh, refreshing like her ex-boyfriend is a little bit silly and she has a friend Hugh Whitbread who is a pompous ass and he, he really you know doesn't have much going on uh, but he's very uh, he's he's very um, successful <laughs> there's some nice symmetry in this book as well uh, there is a sort of I don't know if doppelganger is the word, but you get what I'm getting at. Um, there is this character that is a parallel for Mrs. Dalloway. Um, his name is Septimus Warren Smith, and he is a World War I veteran. Um, Septimus is deeply ill. Um, he's going through what I would call a psychotic event, although he's clearly someone who was shell-shocked, what we call PTSD now. Um, and he is not getting um, the right care. Um, there's a, you know, family practitioner who um, just tries to, you know, basically shake his shoulders and say like, what are you doing to your wife? Uh, and then there's a, a very controlling, um, serious like psychologist who is, um, who is also not, you know, um, thinking of Smith's best interest um, and so we get into his interior and he has these um, moments of psychosis in my opinion they're psychosis because he um, is not in reality um, and he is in this hellscape um, this book talks a lot about life and death embracing life preparing for death um, fearing both um, and so I know that Wolf intentionally um, tried to blur the line between sanity and insanity and she did that intentionally with the way that um, you know Smith is suicidal and is basically crazy um, at, at the moment of the book um, whereas you know Clarissa Dalloway is a successful woman and some of their shot thoughts are similar. Um, so, you know, some of her stranger thoughts, like, you know, she goes to Piccadilly Square. I think it's Square, I'm sorry. She gets to Piccadilly and she sees all of the omnibuses, the, I think they're the huge uh, buses. And she um, thinks how dangerous it is to be l alive every single day, which I guess is true. But she, she, she thinks some strange thoughts that if, Septimus had thought it, you would think, oh, this is why he's being committed. Virginia Woolf actually made this character also to bury her experience, her real experience with mental illness. Um, sadly, I, I can attest that um, I, like the wife of Septimus Smith, um, you know, was in a relationship with someone who um, unfortunately was experiencing signs of psychosis. And um, she, she does a fantastic job. Uh, she um, gives great dignity um, to his thoughts and his, his mind. 
Um, there's there's such elegant prose, um, but it's it's so frightening and horrific and hellish. Um, and so we see this. Um, there, there's a connection between these two characters, though, um, and it's it's fascinating. It's it's a take on, you know, you know the moment that Wolf was living in. She was very interested in um, her time and her, and with modernism. Um, I really really enjoyed this book, and <laughs> I was thinking about this, and I I was thinking. Should I say this or not? This is like over the top and something randomly fell in my house. And I thought, all right, I'm going to say it. But I, you know, Virginia Woolf, I, I love you. I, I think that you were, you know, a great novelist and you gave us such wonderful, <laughs> wonderful books. And I think it's such a shame that she actually did commit suicide um, and she died too young. Um, she could have given us so much more and I'm excited to read her other novels um, and her essays as well. She wrote great essays. She wrote um, A Room of One's Own, which is very popular as well. I'm sorry if you already know about Virginia Woolf. I'm just going over in case people are, you know, watching this as an introduction to her as well. Um, so yeah, if you liked this book, if you hated it, um, you know, uh, if you have any thoughts about this video, please let me know. Um, I will say that I recommend this book to anyone who enjoys classics, is interested in modernism or post-World War I. Um, it's just a, a great classic piece of literature and it's beautiful. Um, so thanks for your time and thanks for listening. Bye.